Press the record button here. I'll come around and see. Press the little red, uh, and it'll start ticking. Oh, yeah, good. That's great. And then our guy can edit it in the library. Hi, Mark. Thanks for editing. This is so... <laughs> All right, guys. So as I was saying, my name is Brandon. I am from the public library. This is my coffee because it is 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, and I kind of have to have coffee. Uh, uh, Miss Bella is being kind enough to video me as I pace back and forth <laughs> just for a few minutes and talk to y'all about career preparedness. May I ask you please, before I get started, um, I do have this, like I, as I mentioned, this brief PowerPoint presentation. What do y'all, do y'all have a plan for after school? You don't all have to share. Does anybody feel moved to share what's happening for you after graduation as far as careers go? Full-time mom. Full-time mom. That's an awesome career. I have uh, 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 a baby on the way due in August, Good. and that baby's mama is queen of my heart, so I'm, uh, mm -hmm. I honor that a lot. What else? Um, factory. Factory, cool, okay, whereabouts? Do you know yet? Um, probably Amazon or Hitachi. Have you uh, had any kind of, so Cody? Yes. Have you had any kind of interview or contact with Amazon or Hitachi, Hitachi just yet? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Cool. So, so this is uh, an hour, probably less, of your life, where I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about skills and things that they'll be looking for at Amazon, at Hitachi, wherever it is that you go. If you go to McDonald's, if you go to Walmart, if you want to try and be a CEO for a big corporation on Wall Street, you have to, in life. Uh, have an interview of some kind uh, with a, a potential employer. And before I go any further, I can tell you just a little tiny bit. Um, maybe you care, maybe you don't. It's totally fine if you don't, but I will tell you that I have um, a lot of uh, HR, human resources training, from a past career in the YMCA. I used to work for the YMCA of the USA for the better part of a decade. That was a job where I had to wear a tie, suit and tie to work every day. In case you can't tell, I was not a big fan of that kind of a job. Um, I like my job today at the public library. It's awesome. I get to come out and share cool stuff with folks like yourselves and the, kind of the whole community. So, But what I can tell you is for the better part of 10 years, I was responsible for the hire, fire, termination, intake, and training process for, uh, I don't know, probably about 700 employees at the YMCA of Central Kentucky, which is in Lexington. So... Again, if you are interested, Bella, you are awesome. Thank you for following me around. If you are interested in what I have to say, um, I am kind of, a, I have some expertise. You can also ask me your questions. If you have questions about applying for jobs, interviewing for jobs, that's what we're going to talk about today. Is that cool? That's my introductory spiel. Very nice. I'm going to go over here for Miss. Oh, I'm so sorry. So, why the heck is I saying H? All right, so what we're gonna talk about today is what it's gonna look like when you're sitting face to face with somebody who is a potential employer. What's a potential employer? It's not a trick question. Sometimes I ask super easy questions. Your boss? Right, so basically a potential employer is somebody who you're sitting in front of saying, hey, uh, I'd like to have a job, right? I'm applying to work where you do, you're the hiring supervisor, right? Um, so there's some responsibility that you might have. Some people feel a little nervous, some people feel a little pressure, and that's cool, either way. Um, but there's a responsibility that you might have there to, I mean, you're kind of telling your story, right, to this person. And what we're gonna cover here in this PowerPoint presentation are some beats, some bullets, about what that person's gonna look for. And the first one, as you see here, is strong work ethic. What is a work ethic? I'll give you a hint. When y'all came into class this morning and wanted to sit on the couch, you were not demonstrating a strong work ethic. <laughs> we were <laughs> demonstrating a comfortable ethic. <laughs> so what is a strong work ethic? You're standing up and uh, talking. Okay, you're on the right track, Bella. Keep saying, saying more things. You're walking around. I mean, Talking. <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest, I don't know if I have the strongest work ethic of anybody I've ever met in my life. Um, a work ethic in my worldview, do we have any other ideas? 
Wait, um, Brandon works on roofs. Okay, nice. Brandon works on roofs, right? So, Brandon, if you were on the roof, right, and you got your ten penny nails in your mouth, and you got the supervisor down on the ground hollering orders at you, and you decided to sit down on the roof and surf Facebook on your iPhone, your smartphone, would that be demonstrating a strong work ethic? Of course not, right? A strong work ethic means, I just said 10 penny nails, because that's the only nail I'm even aware of in my life. My daddy didn't raise me right. I don't know nothing about working on roofs. <laughs> um, uh, a strong work ethic means you're pounding those nails, you're doing your job, you're working hard, and you're demonstrating that you're not being lazy on the job, right? You're not surfing Facebook, you're not texting on your phone, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, yada, yada, right? All right, cool. Um, so another way that we can demonstrate our work ethic to a potential employer, and remember, a potential employer is somebody who we're like, hey, you have a job that I want. Uh, I need to make money for my life, for my kids. Y'all Xbox fans? Bella, I'm guessing you may not be an Xbox fan. PlayStation man? Neither of these? Am I that old? Y'all don't play video games? I'm not that old. I'd rather be outside. Okay, amazing. Amazing. Um, but you're still like, hey, I need this job so I can a roof over my head, right? So I can go out and enjoy the outdoors and then come back home when it's raining, this kind of thing. Um, another way you can demonstrate this, uh, uh, this particular dimension that we're talking about here, right? which is one of the 10 things we're gonna talk about today that potential employers are looking for is a reference letter. What's a reference letter? People you know. People you know do what? They do something for them. Answers in a question. References? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so I'll share, I'll share this piece with you. Whenever I have a job, when I'm about to leave that job, let's say I got a better job, let's say I'm getting ready to move out of state. About two years ago, um, I had a great job here at the public library in Berea. Um, I decided that I wanted to try to move out of state. I had some opportunities in New Jersey, of all places. Um, and so I, I put in my resignation. I said, hey guys, sorry, I'm leaving the library. Before I left Kentucky, I made sure to look at my boss and say, would you please write me a letter, a, re a reference letter. A reference letter is a letter that someone who knows you well, maybe someone who knows you in the workplace, maybe a teacher who can speak on your work ethic, speak on your character, they write for you. It doesn't have to be that long. It could be a couple paragraphs, yeah? Um, and then you can provide this letter with someone else's signature on it so they're vouching for you. Do you see? It's someone else speaking on your behalf, speaking on your character and on your work ethic. Ma'am, I'm really going to All right, this is an easy one, right? Have you guys heard, like, just been, had this stuff drilled into your brain since you were, like, seven years old? Have a positive attitude. Have a positive attitude. Why do you think people have been talking to you about that since elementary school? Is it that important? You sincerely believe it is? What? Brandon said it best. If you don't, you're not going to make it anywhere. That's, in my experience, it really is just that cut and dry. Let me ask you this question. Let's say, let's see, let's say you're working at Hitachi. Yeah? You're working on the assembly line, you're making good money, and you enjoy your job pretty well. You have a coworker who works beside you, and he hates his life. And he's also pretty rude, he's negative, he uses negative language. Uh, negative body language, and he says nasty stuff to you in the workplace. How are you going to feel about that particular coworker? Not a trick question. You're going to like him, be your best friend, think he's awesome, good role model? Hit him with a hammer. <laughs> Cody said, I might hit him with a hammer after a few days of that stuff. All right, so that's my point. My point is this matters. Not just to avoid being hit with a hammer, this matters in a job interview setting, because remember, in a job interview setting, you're sitting in front of someone saying, hey, you have something I want. So here's the best parts about me. Yeah? Man? Okay, so some simple, simple stuff here. Walk in with a smile, please. 
This is very basic. Use positive greetings like sir or ma'am. Uh, yep. Your demeanor and your appearance might say a lot about your attitude, right? So if I came in, I'm doing this thing, and I'm like, what's up? What's up, I'm on a job, man. I have a job, man. Mm -hmm. You probably got a job. That guy's probably going to think I'm, like, high or something, right? <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm not going to get a job with this kind of demeanor. Of course, I'm just being silly. Um, as I told you earlier, I'm gregarious, right? Um, all right, very good. So that's enough about positive attitude. That's kind of a basic one. Our third dimension for interviewing skills, job and interviewing skills, are good communication skills. Let's talk about this for a second. Um, Communication skills are something that I personally value quite a bit myself. What would you ex what would you expect? Teachers, please excuse this interruption, but at this time, all freshmen honorees need to report to the gym for pictures. All freshmen honorees, please go to the gym for pictures. I'm trying to turn that into a, a good communication skills example, but I can't do it. So we'll just move on. <laughs> what would you expect good communication skills to look like? Here's an easier, let me ask you an easier question. What would you expect poor communication skills to look like in the workplace? Or in the classroom. Classroom works too. Hollering. Say again. Like hollering. Hollering. I would, I would not call that a good communication no. skill. Hey, you! Yeah, that... That kind of feels gross, doesn't it? Especially to be called, hey, you. How about, what's your last name, Brandon? Mr. Gibson, I'm curious if you could answer my question today. A little bit better, yeah? Right? Think I'm a total doofus? It's okay if you do. I don't think so. Moving on. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right, so good communication skills, they do start on your resume and application. Here's something we haven't talked about yet. This is our first mention of a resume and application. What is a job resume? Looks like resume. It's pronounced resume. What is it? We worked on this a little bit. Come on. We did? <laughs> I'm sure y'all have some experience. Yes. I'm sure you do. It's where you write a paper about what your worth ethic is. Sure. Okay. Bella said it's when you write a paper about what your work ethic is. Um, I would just add to that and say yes. Uh, I would say it's when you, um, uh, you kind of put down on paper or in words your qualifications for a job. And a resume includes your work history, your education. You'll be able to put your high school graduation and diploma on your resume in the future and this kind of thing. And work experience as you develop it. So if Cody works for Itachi for two years, then he's like, you know what, I'm ready for a change. I'm going to try Amazon in Lexington. He's going to have Hitachi 2016 to 2018. And those guys on the line, the assembly line at Amazon, two years from now, they're going to say, oh, wow, he has this factory experience. He'd probably be a really good, really efficient employee. You see? Yeah? So it's all about demonstrating, kind of talking about yourself in a positive way, demonstrating your skills. Um, so good communication skills do begin with this piece of paper that you either mail or hand, here you go, sir, here you go, ma'am, to a potential uh, employer. It's all right there. And I really want to make another note about that. If you, Bella, were a hiring supervisor at, where's your favorite restaurant in the world? Don't have one. You don't have one. Where's your favorite restaurant in uh, Madison County, in Berea? Don't have one. Well, you're no help. If you were a hiring supervisor at McDonald's, I only asked you because I didn't want to say McDonald's. Everybody goes to McDonald's. Uh, and somebody was coming in looking for a job for the front line. And that person had a resume, but on that resume it said something, something to the effect of, well, y'all might want to hire me because I'm good at things and I like to eat hamburgers. Right? And then you had another person who came in who said, well, I graduated from Madison Southern High School in 2016. Uh, I did babysitting for three years for the Jones family. When I was in high school, I had a work study at such and such a place. Who would you rather hire? The person who likes burgers or the person who has a well-written resume and application? It's kind of a no-brainer, right? 
Right Burgers. As a dude, it's a no-brainer. Cool. And it ends in your interview, obviously communicating back and forth as we are. This is a good question. What does good communication look like to you? I just don't realize that iPads are really heavy. <laughs> you're almost done. I appreciate it. We're going to go to the next slide, and then you're done with that. Then we can actually hang out. What does good communication look like to you? Anybody have any examples, any thoughts? Poor communication. Have y'all ever been in a circumstance? Brandon, have you ever been on a roof in the hot sun and somebody didn't communicate with you very well and they messed up your day in some way? Maybe not, but if not, you've gotten lucky. If, it, it'll happen, I promise. <laughs> it'll happen. Um, so I just really want to drive home to you guys that this is important. In a job interview, it's important to demonstrate this to a hiring supervisor. If a hiring supervisor thinks that you're going to be able to be a good team member, we're going to talk about teamwork and, and team, team membership uh, here in a little bit in the presentation. Um, they are certainly more apt to consider you for employment. Yes, ma'am. Bella, thank you. Would you hit the, the end button there?